How's your morning been? What so time? far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. What Welcome time did you Australia. wake up? Uh, thank you. Um, what time did I wake up? I think I woke up at like 8.45. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. 8.45, had to leave at like 9.30. Oh, did Bit you of a kind sleep of in. got used to kind of the time difference already yet or not really? Not really. Honestly, I woke up like every 30 minutes. Wow. Last oh night. <laughs> Last night. I, was like, I was like, huh? I kept waking up like, oh, did I miss my time? Oh. And then uh, I fell back asleep and I woke up again like 30 <laughs> minutes later. I was like, oh, great. Do you have a morning routine or is it just like get up and go? <laughs> um... I do have a morning. T- well, get up, shower. I like to do vo- like my vocal warm ups mm-hmm. in the shower. Get that out the What's way. What's your favorite vocal warm ups? Do you um, make cat sounds? The cow sounds? Yeah. No, <laughs> I like, don't. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> <laughs> I do do those. Yeah, yeah that's a part of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do the same warm up every day. It's like right. go, 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 go. <laughs> you need like something inside, like water inside your mouth, or just pretty much just go for it. Pretty much just go for it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and what have you done so far in Australia? Um, I went to the zoo, got yes. to meet some koala bears, some yeah. kangaroos, yep. um, went to the opera house, which was super cool, um, got to explore a little bit, but now I'm here in uh, right. Melbourne. Does yeah. someone give you a bit of the spill, like, drop bears? The what? So there's, like, a myth going where there's a bit of drop bears in Australia. What's that? Well, I don't know what oh, that is. Know what oh, <laughs> thank God, I thought, I was like, man, I'm the only one. <laughs> but it's like, when, when, whenever someone who comes down from overseas, we know it's like, oh, beware of the drop bears, you know, they're pretty scary. So, but it's actually just koalas that we just say they're going to jump and they're going to maul you to death. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They drop on you. Yeah. They drop on you. No, yeah. good, thing, good thing they're like, they sleep during the day. So. Yeah, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. So, um, AJ, the first question we normally ask is, what are you watching and listening to that you can recommend? Yeah. Ooh, what am I watching and listening to? Um, I just started Euphoria. Ooh. I'm on like the second or third episode, but it's it's kind of been hard. I've been traveling so much, so it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to like stay consistently watching a TV show. What's it about? I haven't heard of that show before. Um. Oh man. <laughs> I've honestly I haven't watched it in like two. <laughs> in like in like in like a month. Yeah. So yeah. like that's like the most recent show mm-hmm. I've watched. Is mm-hmm. it on Netflix or? Um. I want to say HBO. HBO. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have that here. I don't think we have yeah, that. Not yet. Anyways. Have yeah. you not heard of Euphoria? No. I really. We don't, we don't have HBO here. Got yeah. it. Okay. It was. It's a huge thing in America. Oh, it's like oh, a really okay. big. Um, Look, TV we're show. we're two years behind, so we'll probably get like two years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is true. I'll send you my login. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be great. <laughs> so what you were like, because being in Melbourne, it's probably very different from Illinois, where you are from as yeah. well. We know that you were born in California, but you moved to Illinois when you were about two months old, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So tell us, what's that city about? Um, the city, oh man, it's, um, it's really, really diverse. So like, you go 10 minutes out and you're in the country. Yep. Wow. And then, wow. and then like, you go in my town and it's like, it's pretty ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty ghetto. Um... But I mean, it was it was a it was adventurous. It was very adventurous. Like I was in a really small town. There wasn't really anything to do. Um, the fun things that we did were going to abandoned buildings. Going um, abandoned buildings. Abandoned buildings. There was oh a lot gosh. of those. <laughs> we would just like go explore. Um, if like we wanted to play basketball, we'd sneak into college until we get kicked out. What were you like as kind of like a kid growing up in Illinois? Yeah. Um. Oh man, what was I? I was um. I wouldn't say I was a shy kid. Um. I love being inside. I love playing music, but I also love being outside, yeah. like adventuring, playing basketball. I love playing sports. Me and my friends, we would always like get on our bikes and run around town. Right. Um, yeah. Mm. Perfect. Because you kind of grew up in a semi-musical family, I'd say, because your dad's quite musical itself. Yeah. Like, yeah. My dad, um, he was writing songs when I was yeah. growing up. Yeah. He was always singing, singing songs to my mom. My, my sisters were always singing. We were always harmonized. And right. Yeah. So what it was always music did your parents listen to? Um, they loved like... Kiss to um, ACDC to Stevie Wonder, Michael oh, wow. Jackson, Aretha Franklin, like big, like huge variety. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember listening to that, those, those music like growing up? Has it kind of had an influence of who you are and how you uh, Yeah, definitely, out? definitely. Because I think um, at such an eclectic, like I had that. And then also like music that I listened to was like Coldplay, yeah. um, Lil Wayne, Eminem, like Bruno Mars. So I had that influence, and then um, from like what my friends were listening to, like a lot of hip hop. So I, I think I just like I pulled inspiration from all those genres, and it, and like those are things that I like listening to. It's also music that I like writing as well. Mm. So like we grew up like watching like Hollywood movies and like American schools. Yeah. So the vision I have in my head is like a lot of lockers <laughs> in the hallways and a lot of like That's true. gossiping. Is that what it's like in high school in in America? Um. There's definitely a lot of gossip. Yeah. <laughs> For me personally, I stayed away from all that. I stayed away from the drama. I didn't. I, I didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> what kind of kid were you? Were you like a more of a like book book kid, or were you more Not of like? <laughs> I was like the class clown because I never paid attention in class. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Because you 
grew up in an American kind of a household, at such a young age, you were kind of given so many opportunities, like you put up videos on social media mm-hmm. to kind of start that career as well. Yeah. What kind of propelled you to do that? Um, I think it, w- I, well, I was 13 when I started releasing that and I kind of just was at that moment where I was like, man, I want my friends to know that I sing and because no one really knew. None of my friends knew um, besides like my parents and like my, maybe my one best friend. Mm. And so one day I finally just decided to post a couple videos and um, from that moment, my friends were like, oh, you're good, dude. Like keep posting more. And I was like, okay. I felt confident. So I just kept posting more videos. I started gaining a fan, ba- fan base from that. And um, that's kind of what did you started. tell? Because I can imagine like just posting something on YouTube, especially singing, because like you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. Is that not a scary thing to do? It was really scary. Yeah. I was really scared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It like took a couple hours for me just to like post it. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, we like refreshing as well constantly. <laughs> oh, the views must go up. The views must yeah, go I up. Like, I was like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So how did it? How did it like go from sharing to your friends to all these people following you and like messaging you and leaving comments. Yeah. At what stage did that change from, yeah, from doing something for your friends to... Um, about a year later. So I started posting videos um, and then a year later, randomly I got a shout out out of nowhere. This page had a million followers. Wow. Um, I got like 15,000 followers in one day. It was like wow. the craziest day of my life. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and when was the point in time where you decided that, you know, I could probably much do this full time or was it more of a side gig for you then? Um, I think once once the followers started coming in, that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm going to take this seriously. Right. And rock with this. Did you decide that you wanted to continue doing social media promoting, promotion or was it more like you were kind of think because I know there's a lot of avenues in America. You can, yeah. you can go for like music competition, like The Voice, X Factor then, but yeah. you decide just, just to keep going with social media or? Yeah, I was going to keep doing, um, doing social media. I was thinking about doing like The Voice or American Idol or something like that, but we kind of, me and my parents, we looked into it and we're like, I don't know if that's the route that we want to take. Uh, I see. Why is that? Um, Because we just saw like, um, you know, they sign you to a contract. They have like, they own like a huge percentage of your whole entire career. Like they choose what music you put out. And I'm a songwriter. So I was like, "Uh, I like writing my own songs. (laughs) Moving forward to when you blew up on social media, when was that kind of turning point where you pretty much got a lot of opportunities to kind of go for it? Yeah. So I think I was like, 14 and then um someone reached out to me they're like hey come out to los angeles we have a cool opportunity for you which was to join um like this social media group for a little bit um ended up realizing that's not what i wanted to do um i wanted to take music seriously um so then that's when my manager came into my life and then i lived with him for about a year and a half we released um three singles on our own and then that's when the label came in and how do you how did you release music independently because these days it's so much easier to just put stuff out there yeah so like back in the day you have to like go to the studio to like record and get it onto a cd and like, yeah yeah right so what's the process like releasing something independently um it was still the same thing like i still went to the studio um got a producer to produce it i mean it's pretty much the same yeah do you feel like there's a bit of um a change i guess a trend in music because a lot of the times people do become more independent yeah was there a difference why you wanted to go approach a record label or they approach you rather than just staying independent for yourself? So actually we weren't, um, in the beginning, we weren't going to go with the label. Mm -hmm. We were going to just do it independently um, just because like the things we heard about labels, my manager used to work for a label and he just saw a lot of stuff that he didn't really um, think was um, the right thing. And for a while we were like, okay, we're not going to do with the label. We're just going to go independently for a while. And then once once we started um, once we started meeting with a couple labels, we met, met with Epic Records, and that's when we we were just like, if it feels right, it feels like a family, and and it just felt perfect. I don't know if you know much, but in like in China, right? There's what's the streaming service? Oh, in China like called? NetEase. NetEase. So the, yep. there's like a streaming service, like it's like similar to Spotify, uh-huh. but it's they just instead of like getting a I guess like a record label yeah a lot of what that happens with in China because there's no real record label there at the moment the streaming servers are massive yeah if we think Spotify and Apple Music they're like times tens the size mm-hmm. yeah so what the artists they just go straight to the streaming services to pretty much get their funds and the, kind of the record labels are kind of dropped out because they don't need that we find that in a yeah. Yeah. yeah so we see like you know even Iggy is it yeah. is area <laughs> Chance the Rapper mm-hmm. they're making so much success as being independent artists as well yeah which is which is crazy Mm. Yeah. For them. And when um, when you started going back a bit, you also had the opportunity to kind of work with a little bit of Team Ten as well. Yeah. What was that like? Um. So in the beginning, it was a great opportunity. It was a really cool opportunity. Um. Definitely helped build a following. Um. Had the opportunity to go to go to Los Angeles and live there for a while. And 
but that's when I kind of realized I was like, I don't want to be a social media influencer. Mm, yeah. I don't want. I want people to take my um, take me seriously. I want people to take my music seriously. And that's when my manager came into my life. Right. And did you find that you did get a lot of followers during that time as well? Did yeah. you find that your direction with, I guess, your vision and their vision kind of didn't really line up? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because when I watch, I mean, Team Ten's quite controversial, you know. Yeah, they, very. <laughs> a lot of the stuff that they do post up is a bit silly, I'd say. But yeah. even for yourself, like, I guess you wanted to kind of take the propeller into a more, fir- I mean, take it more seriously as well. Yeah, totally. And I wanted other people to, when they saw me, not think like, oh, he's this influencer or yes. he's a social media influencer. I yeah. wanted people to. Yeah. Do you know, think, and were your parents with you during that entire time in LA? My, my mom was. So she would come out with me for about two weeks and then we would go back home. Then sometimes I would come out for like two weeks and I'd go back home. And then I was doing that for like two or three months right. until I officially moved to LA. And what does your mom or dad do? Um, so my dad's a nurse. Um, he's a travel nurse, and then my mom um, had a part-time uh, right. business, but now now she doesn't work. Okay, so do they kind of follow you everywhere that you go nowadays, or? Um, no, no, they don't. So they're they live in LA now, yep. um, which they love. <laughs> <laughs> they like vacation all the time. Oh. <laughs> they love it. Yeah. Um, do you have? Do they? How do they keep you grounded? Because like now that you're like a successful songwriter and singer, mm-hmm. songwriter, do they try and keep you humbled and grounded? Do they make you do chores still? Do they make you like <laughs> wash the dishes? Um, I. Honestly, um, I, I keep up with that stuff. I I'll, yeah. I'll keep up with that stuff. But also, I have my friend who just mm-hmm. moved to LA, so it's nice to have him around. And so, not always having like yes people around. Like yeah. he always keeps me mm-hmm. humble. He's like, nah, bro. <laughs> you yeah. know? Do you find that the bigger you are becoming, there's more people wanting to come into your life? Um, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So you just, do you feel like because recently on social media, we're looking through your Instagram. There was a post that you posted which you were singing Coldplay. Yeah. Beautiful cover, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. And you wrote um, on your social media page that you were just kind of tired of being kind of fake, being happy as well. Yeah. And when I looked at it, I felt, wow, this is quite sad because you're only 18. You're going through so yeah. much as well. What was going through your mind when you kind of posted that? Yeah. So what was going through my head was like, it definitely started with like social media because I've been doing social media for about four years now. Um, having to post every day, mainly because I have to, not because I wanted to. Yeah. And I think that's what was the, the issue at the moment. I was like doing this every day. It was like, I had to hop on a plane. I was like taking videos on a plane. I was like, I don't really want to do this. Yeah. Um, but now, now I'm at that point where I just post when I, when I feel like it and I post when I want to and I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually important, important to me and now I don't, now I feel, I feel great now. You, so behind the scenes, because people don't see what goes on behind the scenes, right? So yeah. normally when you go somewhere, you would have to save the photo and then you have to think, oh, I should have to like post this at yeah. this time. Is that why it's tiring and why it's... Yeah, it can be. You're like, oh, I have to post it at this time mm-hmm. or I have to do this. I have to, oh, it has to be like this. Or it has to like, yeah. like the, it needs to be like this. But now it's like, no, I'm just going to do it when I want to. And, mm. and it's, I, I, feel, I feel it's a lot better now. Yeah. Is there like um, certain, I guess, pressures, do like certain hashtags or do you, like, does your company need to kind of check on numbers that you have to kind of reach to make them happy or? Um, no, we don't really focus on like hashtags yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? and stuff yeah. like that. But, yeah. Hashtags so 2012. Yeah, yeah. come on now. <laughs> <laughs> know that. Not I, I, I said you live in a hashtag. I don't know. I feel like outfit of the day. I don't yeah. know. Lifestyle. No one does that anymore. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I must be a little bit behind. As long as you don't do hashtag likes. So like oh, yeah. hashtags. Yeah. Like, likes. Back. Show some love. Yeah. Or something, you know. <laughs> That's true. Um, but fast forward to when you got that record deal. What was the process like? Did you have to do anything different than what you originally were doing? Um... I guess the only thing that was, I mean, not the only thing, but one of the main things was like, right when I signed, I was in so many sessions, like meeting new people, meeting a lot of new writers, meeting a lot of new producers, kind of finding out um, the team, like people who I wanted to work with. Right. And what is it like working with other people just writing? Um, I love it. I, I remember in the beginning, it was so weird because I, I used to write all my songs by myself. I used to play the piano and just like, that's how I would do my songs and like going to the studio and writing with other people. In the beginning, it was really hard to speak up and um, yeah. actually be vulnerable and talk about stuff. Um, but now I'm at that point where I feel very comfortable to mm. do all that. What kind of things do you, have you found the hardest to write about? Because you write a lot about your personal life. So what's been the hardest part about writing? What, what part of your life has been the hardest part to write about? Um, the hardest part, um, I would say the hardest, the hardest part is like, you know, the thing like I posted the other day that that's, that's like the hardest stuff to you really talk about and put out yeah. there. Um, yeah. Do you find it's hard to be vulnerable online as well? Yeah. That was yeah. literally the first time I've, 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 I've ever been like vulnerable like that oh, on social media. Like I never, I was never really like that, but then I just realized like it doesn't really matter. And also I think it's, I think 
um, my fans deserve to hear that. Uh, I see. To like see where I'm going through, and also like everyone goes through something. So if they don't see that I'm not going through anything, mm. then you know. Yeah. What was it like working with Slurdance with Ava Max? It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So originally, she's so cool. Yeah, she's yeah. super cool. <laughs> Sweet psycho. Uh, <laughs> oh, she's great. Um, she was good. she was amazing. Yeah. So it was really originally just me on it, and then um, we were like, oh, who do we want on the song? Like it felt it felt right to have a feature on it, and Ava Max was one of the first um, people on the list, and sent it over sent it over to her team. She cut it like six hours and wow. sent six it back hours. Over, literally in six hours wow. sent it back over and it was just i fit perfectly her voice was amazing she's on like christina aguilera <laughs> <laughs> we have the runs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i was like Woo. is there going to be any other big collabs like eva max on your album that's coming out um not on this album but i definitely have a list of people that mm. i, I want to collaborate so with. this album's gonna be more i guess like you're on your own right yeah pretty much this album is kind of letting people know like who i am mm -hmm. this is where i came from and um, the album, album's called Skyview, mm -hmm. and Skyview is a drive-in movie theater in my hometown. Oh. And that's, like, the big, like, staple piece in my hometown, because there's, like, like I said, there's, like, nothing to do there. And um, Skyview was, like, the one thing that reminds me of my hometown. And um, so, yeah. Do you, feel, do you feel like for your first album, it's important to, like, write about things that, like, for example, your hometown, because that's so you and you want to tell your fans who you are yeah is that is that why the reason why you kind of like wanted to have that as a centerpiece of the album yeah definitely and i think it's important that uh people really get to know who you are because then i feel like one, once they know who you are then they understand the music and then they really fully get the project oh, I see. is there a bit of because you started when you i think the first song that you when you were 13 used to be that's mm. got like 60 million streams right now that's yeah. incredible do you find that the songs that you write is it hard to kind of keep it from an authentic place? Um, I'm sorry, you said it's hard to keep uh, is, it. Is it hard to keep it from authentic? Because <clears throat> uh, um, you might get a bit of pressure from people. You might need to write like this, yeah. like sound like this. But yeah, is totally. it hard to kind of do something that you want to do? Um, so actually for a while, it, I, I used to be like, oh, the songwriting it needs to be like this or the chorus needs to be like this and uh, oh, it needs to be verse, pre, chorus or something like, you know. And then recently I just realized like, it doesn't really matter as long as long as it feels good to me and you know it just feels right then i don't think it matters mm. and where do you kind of draw that inspiration because you are you are you're only 18 years old mm -hmm. where do you kind of draw that inspirations from is it yeah. a lot of heartbreaks or a lot of life experience that you go through that you write about um i like to write about like life experiences yeah. and like stuff that i've been going through and um pretty much just like everyday life just like what i'm going through mm. who do you show the songs after you finish with them who, who's the first person that you show it to my parents. Your parents? <laughs> yes. nice. Either my parents or I show my best friend or I'll send it to my cousin. Oh, like, what right. do you think? Are they, are they honest when they, like, with the feedback? or they're just Yeah, like, they're, they're brutally honest. Yeah. <laughs> What's the harshest thing they've ever said about your songs? I just, well, they're not, like, that harsh, but yeah. they'll tell me, they're like, I really don't like this song. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, they've, they've said that about a couple. Yeah, yeah. I really don't like this one. <laughs> yeah. do, do you keep it on the album if they say they don't like it? Or you just kind of, ah, oh, whatever? Um, I, lis I listen to them, but if I, if I like, if I'm, like, I think you're wrong. Then I'll, I'll uh -huh. <laughs> ah, but I, I I I listen to them. They have good, uh, they have good ears. So talk us about Skyview. So what kind of sound or what kind of feel or kind of lyrics are we kind of looking into? Yeah. So for um, Skyview, this this album's majority like pop, but it definitely has um, influence um, with like R and B. I would say like um, it has like some like Phil Collins like drums. Um, some of the like, music that your dad's listening to. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Do you feel that um, when you're working with a lot of people, is it hard to, even for your latest album, Sky, but do you feel that it's hard to kind of express what you want? Because you're obviously getting different ideas, but to filter that out. Yeah. Is it hard to kind of say, no, I don't want this? Or is it hard for people to kind of take you seriously as well as an artist when you're constantly writing and for people to say like, oh, I don't really feel like I want to write about this, I want to write about this, or... um. I'm sorry. I, I oh, that's right. right. Like, <laughs> like it's the Aussie accent. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. Like when you're writing th with other people, is it hard if you don't agree with their ideas? Is it oh. hard to let them know? Or um, no. I, in the beginning, it really was. In the beginning, if I didn't like someone, I never said anything. But now, uh, yeah. but now, now I'm at that point where if you don't say anything, then um, then you, then you're not gonna get what you want, and then you're not gonna rock with the song anyway. So it's important to just say how you feel right when you feel it. I see. And is there any artist that you wish that is not on this album, but that you would want to work with in the future? Totally. Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Camila Cabello. Yes. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. John Bellion, uh, Bruno Mars. That'd be sick. Because you, you and Camila Cabello are signed under the same records. Uh -huh. Have you, being at the records, um, the Epic Records studio, have you ever bumped to anyone that you got a little bit of like starstruck with? Um, at Epic Records? 
Uh, I think the only like celebrity that I saw at Epic Records was uh, DJ Khaled. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Because I was going through um, the list of people who are Epic Records this morning. I I saw like Mariah Carey. Oh yeah. yeah. I love Megan Trainor. <laughs> so if I was there, I'd probably be like, so I couldn't even speak to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you met um I read you met Sean Mendes before as well. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I met him a couple times. Where'd you meet him? The first um, time. Um. Honestly, I don't remember the first time I met him. We've hung out a couple times. Um, the only one I can really remember was like we hung out at Lollapalooza. We saw stage. Funny story. Oh, we yeah. saw him. We um, had a run with Shaman <laughs> pretty much like just outside this building yeah. over here. Because he came down for like oh, a really? concert two weeks ago. Oh, nice. And then he just finished a gym workout. He did yeah. finish a gym workout. <laughs> he was like sitting outside anytime fitness. Yeah. So then me and Phil were driving around <coughs> to get to the studio. And I looked, I was like, is that Shawn Mendes? And we're like, no, no, it, can, it cannot be. <laughs> so then I was like, no, 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 it is. So we drove another huge block around the building. I was like, that is Shawn Mendes. So I <laughs> jumped out of the car, went up to him. And I was like, excuse me, are you sure Mendez? He's, and he looked at me, he got up and he walked away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no way. But I understand. He, he probably was just tired. Yeah. He didn't want anyone to bother him as well. Him, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. But Oof, that, that was, was my that only was interaction with Sean Mendez. It was great. I loved <laughs> he it. He didn't say anything. He was just like, he, he just looked yeah. at me. No, he was really into his music. I think he yeah. was preparing for his concert. Because he was uh, performing that night. It, and he was just it. like, yeah, jamming to his like, yeah, and it was like a, a big guy who came out of the gym as well. After I think that was his bouncer, yeah. and then I was like, "Excuse me, is that Shawn Mendes?" And he's like, "I don't know, bruh." And then he went and talked to Shawn Mendes. Like that's his bouncer. That's when it clicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. usually when I realize that even yourself, do you find that is there a certain way for people to approach you if they see you on the streets? Um, a certain way. Um, I don't know. Uh, everyone's different. Some people are like poke me and be like hey are you AJ Mitchell <laughs> yeah you know same thing yeah, same yeah. thing I think my general is if they're not in if they're not dressed up and for the part then I don't approach them because they probably want their own private time because they're not yeah there. right 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 yeah. so before we head off we do have some wrap up questions cool so the first question is what do you have to do every single day no matter how busy you are warm ups warm-ups. always do my vocal warm oh, vocal warm ups yeah always talk yeah. us through what, what goes in through wo- vocal warm ups um, so basically I have uh, this vo- voice note of yeah. Uh, vocal warm-ups that I do right. every morning. Yep. It's like 20 minutes. Yeah. What's the same time. vocal? Yeah. Yeah. Does it get like kind of boring after a while? <laughs> do you kind of need to change it up or? Um, every once in a while I change it up, try to do something different, but I d- sometimes I don't even notice it. I'm just doing it. I, I like to do it in the shower. Like I'll p- play it on right. while I get ready in the morning. Better, better. Um, it's like putting my clothes yeah. on. Do, 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 you know? <laughs> I don't know when I do because I, I try I attempt to do vocal warm ups yeah. but every time I do I'm usually in the car with my friends my family but they just complain like shut up yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no totally when I do my warm ups I like to be by myself because yeah. I know like mm-hmm. it's going to be annoying yeah, yeah, doing yeah. the same like do, do, do. <laughs> what's your favorite part of Australia so far um Best oh man thing. just seeing everything yeah. honestly I love I love traveling and like seeing different cultures and like seeing the world so I just love like the traveling part like mm. I've already been to Sydney now I'm in Melbourne and just like seeing all the different places are you into coffee I am into coffee. Oh, we ha- I, I'd say, I don't want to be a coffee snob, but I'd say we had the best coffee That's actually in what I heard. Yeah. I heard the coffee here is really good. Is that true? I haven't had it oh, yet. Oh, you haven't had oh. one yet? But I'm about to have one yeah. really soon. Yeah. <laughs> right after this. And um, next question, which person, dead or alive, who doesn't have social media that you wish you could follow? Hmm. Does Stevie Wonder have an Instagram? I don't know. Wait, does he? <laughs> I think someone probably no, doesn't do it. So. <laughs> he probably doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. He probably doesn't. That's <laughs> right. He probably can't run his account. If he did, what do you think? What do you think his social media would be like? If he oh, had, no. if he had one, <laughs> it would be a lot of photos. I think it would be a lot of audio. I think uh, he could post a lot of like Instagram stories. Like he'll be talking to it. Yeah. And someone will probably be operating it for him. Yeah. Someone would be you know doing it for him. Someone would be doing it for him. Now, this is all out of love too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah exactly. All of love. I love Stevie Wonder. Yeah. He was like one of the first. I was like super starstruck mm-hmm. when I met Stevie Wonder. Oh, well, I didn't get to meet him, but I like saw him on stage, and I was like, oh my god, that's Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you think that you would want to work with him one day? I would love to. Yeah. I'd love to work with Stevie Wonder because one of he's definitely one of the greats. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, there, sure. Totally. And last but not least, what's one song you wish you had written? Any song? Um, I would say At Last by Eddie James. Oh, that that's like great. one of my favorite songs of all time. I love like the, the strings the in it. The slowness, yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I've, I want to remix that and like <laughs> oh, do my own. Oh, should. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Wonderful. What, definitely check us out on Lemon and definitely check AJ's new album out, Skyview, which is coming out when? Um, early 2020. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, thank you.